Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so Lakers just came off a win a couple of hours ago, it seems like, against the San Antonio Spurs. And have to turn around and go to New Orleans tonight and face the Pellies at 5 p.m. Pacific. Another early game. 8 p.m. Eastern, of course. And um, we're on a four-game winning streak, L.A. We look pretty good. AD had 40. Braun got his fourth straight triple-double to align with those four straight wins. Um, you know, we had a much better game from our struggling players. Max Christie got some good minutes and did great things with him uh, to the point where I gave him the game ball. Three steals from D'Lo. He looked pretty good. Hit his shots. Got some assists off his usual from the bench. Um, Gabe Vincent, Cardi G actually had a pretty good game for the standards we have for him. About three steals there. Hit a three-point shot in the clutch. You know, we just got contributions. Austin hit like five or six threes, had like 19 points. It was a really good game for a lot of our guys who had been having rough starts to their season. And um, it all came together at the right time because, of course, yesterday it was a cup game. So we, we continue our undefeated streak in this tournament. And, um, you know, everything came together just right there in the end against the San Antonio Spurs, who really did put up a valiant and strong effort. Um, but we continued to push through, and um, it was a much-needed home win. I mean, excuse me, road win. Road win. Now, tonight, we go up into New Orleans, the Smoothie King Arena, and they are probably the most depleted team in basketball. I don't, I don't know of any team that's gotten hit with more injuries than them. Uh, we're talking six players out. And I don't even know if I can name off all the names. That's how many, <clears throat> that's how, how extensive it is. It's, I'll do my best, though. Jose Alvarado's out. Jordan Hawkins is out. Uh, Zion Williamson, of course, is out. Herb Jones is out. CJ McCollum is out. And DeJounte Murray. I did it. I did it. They're all out. They will not be available tonight. So as a result, they really, really have a tough bench situation and starting situation all the way around. B.I. is the only starter that they have that's available. They literally just got Trigger Murphy back, so you got to be careful with him. And then they got a guy by the name of Brandon Boston Jr. who's playing out of his mind right now with the opportunity given. You don't even want some of them guards to come back. He's playing so dang good with those minutes. But it's not translating to too many wins, although they broke their six-game losing streak last night in their cup game against the Denver Nuggets where Jokic missed the game with some personal stuff. So they were able to crush the Nuggets on the glass with 17 offensive rebounds, which is something we really need to consider given the fact that it just happened five minutes ago. They finally broke their losing streak. They tasted a win, and they, believe it or not, are starting to see the light at the end of this horrible injury tunnel with Trey Murphy coming back and starting to get in the rhythm. Brandon Ingram having basically a career season on a bad team and uh, Brandon Boston continuing his um, do-it-all play. He's the type of guy who will get you 10 assists if he can't score. If he can score, he's, he's doing all types of stuff on both sides of the floor. Wiry, finishing lobs, hitting threes, getting boards. I mean, this dude is doing literally everything. And if we do make a trade somehow with the Pelicans, I definitely want that kid on the Lakers. So he's breaking out. And he looks like he's ready to take on a massive opportunity um, going forward. And they're going to be getting a lot of people back, as you can clearly see. And some of those minutes may dissipate, but um, he's earned them. Full-fledged breakout. Unbelievable out-of-nowhere breakout for Brandon Boston. So you're definitely going to hear his name tonight. The two Brandons, y'all. Brandon Ingram and Brandon Boston. So for me... When you talk about what the, the Pelicans have, it's just a miserable situation, of course, with the injuries out. But I did try to pay attention to see who is really getting minutes right now. And uh, Jalen Noel, a guy that we had on our our team about five, four years ago, who really showed out, in my opinion, and we just let him walk just like everybody else. He's getting some minutes. A guy by the name of Trey Jimison is getting some minutes at the center position off the bench. We've seen him play pretty well. Uh, in, in last time we saw them, of course, we saw the Pelicans in the uh, play in uh, the in season. What do they call it? The, the, the postseason tournament play, whatever they call it. Damn thing. 
get them mixed up. But uh, we saw the, him in 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 the uh, in the one and done game, the Pelicans, and of course we had played two games in a row against the Pelicans. The first game where Zion, of course, got hurt and was kicking our butt in the fourth quarter, we almost lost that game. And of course, because we had won the game, we saw them in the tournament where we were able to punch our ticket to the playoffs. Of course, to get knocked off by the Nuggets, but we obviously have extensive history with this team in the short term and of course looking further back making the trade for Anthony Davis giving them B.I. of course there's history there so you know just to continue with who they're using uh, with Alvarado out you know they of course I've mentioned Trey Jemison Jalen Noel you got to talk about uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl who made his name with the Oklahoma City Thunder and is now continuing his career with the Pelicans in this opportunity here. Um, who else do they got on that bench, man? It, it's it's really, really depleted. And uh, we should be able to take massive advantage of them. Massive advantage. But do not lose sight of the Brandon, Brandon, Trigger Trio. That's what I'm calling the Brandon, Brandon, Trigger Trio. Brandon Boston, Brandon Ingram, Trigger Murphy. Those are the guys who are going to be attacking you. They recently played, of course, it was the Old Clay Seed Thunder. I think they had like 24 turnovers or something terrible like that, lost by like 20-something points. And they've had some really tough games, man. They played the Orlando Magic, or their Magic ran them out of town. They played the Cavs. The Cavs are never losing again, as we always say. Um, I think they lost to the Nets as well, who started the season hot for their standards have players breaking out all over the roster so it hasn't been an easy schedule for these pelicans and of course during this circumstance you're going to lose all those games without all of those people so this should be yet another one of those situations where we should overmatch them uh, obviously Rui didn't play last night with an ankle I'd imagine he's not playing tonight if it wasn't good yesterday it probably ain't only good uh, 24 hours later when you have to take a flight or a bus or whatever they had to do from San Antonio to New Orleans so my guess is he's not going to go tonight. And um, Jackson Hayes, same thing. My guess is they don't they don't play either one of these back-to-backs. Now, I haven't seen anything in regards to Bron and AD missing this game. Obviously, they just played. So one would think if they do miss the game, it wouldn't be overly surprising, especially against this depleted team. But with Anthony Davis's history with the Pelicans, I just feel like he's probably going to want to play this game. Um and the way that Bron's been playing lately, I think he's probably going to want to play too. So that's just my guess. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers further rest some people. But we are a bit depleted ourselves, to say the least, given the fact that we're still waiting on Wood and Vanderbilt and so on and so forth. So, And, of course, with Rui possibly continuing his absence, it may be in our best interest to just duke it out and try to play this game as a full unit. Um, so... We will see, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if we rest somebody. Austin, somebody might get a rest. So, you know, we'll see. But that's kind of what it is, man. This is just a Pelican team that finally broke their losing streak. They had lost six straight games against some really solid teams. It was looking bleak down there. They turned the ball over. They missed some shots, and they are awful defensively. Or just awful. 29th, I believe, in defensive rating. 28th in offensive rating. I think that's how they go. And like 29th in, in overall uh, net rating. Like this is this is truly one of the worst teams in basketball right now. They are awful. And obviously if Jokic was out there, that would have been an entirely different story because he would have took care of that rebounding situation for the, for the Nuggets. And uh, likely would have put up 50 points on this team. So, you know, looking at the highlights, they just really had a good game from B.I. And with Trey coming back, he's able to get in rhythm. He had double figures and... So they kind of just used their trio to, to take care of uh, business against the Nuggets. And really, even if, with the Nuggets missing Jokic, that's still a pretty bad loss for the Nuggets, especially when you consider it's a tournament game. So, you know, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I'm sure they're pleased they won their game, but we need to make sure they don't go on a two-game winning streak. This is a, I would say it's a trap game, uh, second off a of back-to-back against a bad team on the road when you've had road woes it can it can be something that catches us off guard if they all get hot but they have so much wrong right now with their roster 
that it's going to be very difficult for me to see them compete with us unless we come in and just stand around and watch them do whatever they do without even trying. But that does not mean you get to walk into this building and expect that you're just going to get an easy win. We did that in Detroit, and we got beaten. You know, a guy like Trey can go off for 40. A guy like B.I. can go off for 40. If they're both hot at the same time, now you got a real formidable situation going on. So this is why I don't want us to take our foot off the gas. We've been a bad road team, as already stated. We have to capture the ones we're supposed to win. And we've been pretty decent about doing that for the most part this season. Um, so we need to continue to do that. You know, when the, when, the, when the schedule gets soft for a Western Conference team, they really need to come in with a heightened sense of capturing the victory. It's, it's so important that you capture those. You shouldn't be taking nights off when you see bad teams. You should see that as an opportunity to earn a win that shouldn't be as difficult as most nights. So if anything, I think if you're looking at it the way I want us to look at it, uh, we're going to jump all over this team. We're going to jump all over this team early, fast, and hard, and we're going to get them out of here. And we're going to be able to play Bronny James in the fourth quarter of this game. That's how this should potentially go, um, if, especially if Austin and, 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 and Max continue playing the way they've been playing. D'Lo give us some of that production he's been giving us off the bench. Hopefully we can get something out of Cam Reddish, who decided he wanted to be Cardi G last night himself, running around for 19 minutes, didn't accomplish any stats whatsoever. I don't expect that too much anymore because that's not really who he's been. But all in all, it just felt like the Lakers really snapped out of a bad way in multiple fronts yesterday. And hopefully they just continue that momentum. I, I, without rest, I could see guys being flat-footed tonight off a of back-to-back on the road. But even the flat-footed Laker team should be able to overcome this highly, highly depleted New Orleans Pelicans squad tonight. But, um, you know, Brandon Ingram ain't missing too many shots, man. We need to understand that he's, he's his best self right now. Just so very unfortunate that his team around him isn't healthy because he really is taking steps forward, being more efficient. He looks like he's in amazing shape. So we just, you know, we're going to run into a very... Uh, very talented and motivated individual tonight in Brandon Ingram. And so I just want people to be aware of that. I would not be surprised if he has a career night tonight. Not by any stretch of the imagination. The ball's going to be in his hands. And with the rhythm that he's in, uh, it, it, there's no reason to believe that he's not going to play well against his old squad at home. So that's what I do expect. And like I said, Trigger Murphy is a, is a three-point sniper, man. You leave him out there for too long, he's going to go crazy. He has length that could be disruptive um he makes pretty good decisions just a pure shooter man so i really really like that player as you guys know and uh we'll be keeping an eye open tonight uh to assure he doesn't snipe us down but i i think generally in most situations if the lakers come in and play the way they did last night against the spurs they should really have a good time beating the hell out of the new orleans pelicans i'm just gonna be honest with you and that's not indicative of what the Pelicans look like when they're healthy, because when they're healthy, they are a very good team. Um, those are extremely talented players that are missing right now. And you're playing the back of their bench. So all things considered, this could be a blessing in the skies for the Pelicans when they get everybody back. Their bench is even more seasoned, more worthy. You know, they found something in this Boston kid. So their team is going to be one of the deepest in the league. I think that's what this is kind of showing us, that they've been able to get four wins to start the season in the first, what, 14 games. And everybody's out. Everybody that you would consider really good for this team is basically out, with the exception of B.I. You know, so, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, you don't feel good about things if you're the Pelicans, but you know you're getting some, some hellacious talent back. You just got to get them all healthy at the same time. So they're, they're a bit of an optical illusion. It looks like they could tank right now. But I see slowly but surely, probably by February, they could be a team on a really serious winning streak. And by the end of the season, they're going to have so much depth that, that who knows what they'll look like if they can get them all back healthy. So that's what it is. DeJounte Murray, C.J. McCollum, you know, Zion and Herb Jones. Like that ain't those ain't min minor names by any stretch of the imagination, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, you know, this is a talented team, but. This, you know, they just got the worst luck ever when it comes to injuries. And it could happen to anybody. 
Maybe if anyone knows that is us. So we're humble when we come into this building. We understand that we can beat this team's version, the version of this team that we see right here. And because we have a long season series ahead with this team, it would be wise for us to capture this victory. Don't have any letdowns when they got nothing but their bench on the floor. L.A., that's what it really comes down to. Don't have any letdowns because you best believe there's going to be times later on in the season when you have to see all those people. And it ain't going to come as easy. You know, this is the team we did knock out of the tournament last year. Postseason tournament, or whatever they call it, damn thing. For whatever reason, I can't think of it. But, you know, we they should be inspired, especially inspired, to try to take one from us. And if they could humiliate us by beating us with their depleted bench squad, they're going to do that. So we should have a heightened, um, intense uh, way of, of approaching this basketball game, looking to do to them what it is they would otherwise do to us if they had an opportunity. So I expect the Lakers to come out and, and look to demoralize this squad, quite honestly. You stump them out. You take their, their their heart right out of their chest. If you're serious about playing this game, you're going to do it on the defensive end like you did last night. You're going to control the glass. You're going to play better defense. And you're going to stifle this team. You're going to you're gonna double guys like B.I. You're going to play good perimeter defense on all of who's available shooting the ball. And we're going to hold this team under 100 points. Like that's That's what I think should be done tonight you know we shouldn't lose but we shouldn't lose we should not win this game by anything less than 20 points if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in my opinion assuming everybody plays so that's really my attitude man I, I i know how important it is to capture these type of wins in the western conference and i also know how tired a team could potentially be after playing last night in a tournament game so you know Let's, let's come out. Hopefully these guys are getting rest right now. It's still early in the morning, about 6.30, so I hope our team is entirely asleep. And, um, you know, it's only a two-game hop skip back home. You know, this is it. It's the end of the road trip. We head back on Friday to play, I don't remember who we play. Is it OKC or something like that? I don't think it's OKC. We play somebody on Friday, I believe it is, so. Uh, no, Tuesday. Excuse me. We play someone on Tuesday. That's how that goes. Is it Phoenix or somebody like that? I'm not really sure. Yes, we do have to play Phoenix again this week, by the way. I hope people are patient with that. <clears throat> and also, by the end of the week, we play the Orlando Magic, where we will debut our alternate floor and our alternate jerseys. So that's going to be really exciting later on this week when we see the Orlando Magic. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's really what it is, Lakers. We just got to capture this one. It's probably the easiest game we're going to get in the Western Conference. Uh, this team is just as depleted as the Philadelphia 76ers, so we should take care of business tonight. We should take care of business and beat this team for sure. So that's really what it is, man. Love what I saw last night, but we don't even get five seconds to really consider it because we're back out to play another game. But, you know, we're on a four-game winning streak. We feel good about ourselves. And this, this Pelicans team should not be able to beat us if we bring the proper attitude to the situation. Dalton Connect. I want to see more Dalton, man. I want to see more Dalton. Get more shots up. Get into his bag tonight. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I have said many times that he and... Trigger Murphy kind of mirror one another in some of the areas that you would expect to see affected on the floor. They're both elite three-point shooters, both got similar length, stuff like that. So, you know, in a perfect world, they'll be going back and forth with Dalton winning that matchup. So that's, the, you know, that's the kind of featuring I want to see Dalton get. He's a real scorer in this league. He's not some role player that we need to just have as an afterthought. This is a guy you can give 12 shots too and you can get good points out of that particular player so connect for it I want to see get featured a little bit tonight more Max Christie tonight you know what I mean I wouldn't mind seeing us kind of lean into some of those guys that played well last night um, who had been struggling because they really looked like they were snapping out of their issue man hopefully Gabe Vincent can can have a, two good games in a row man um, because I, I do see, I'm sensing that in some minor way, 
he's starting to find a way to snap out of the slump that he's been in. I felt that he had an impactful game about two games ago, another bad game after that, and then this San Antonio game where I thought was a good game. So that's two out of the last three games where I felt like he's been better. So hopefully that trend continues and we can start to finally see Gabe Vincent become a player we can respect again. So I'm paying close attention to that. I'm looking for opportunities for him to uh, improve, and I think that I'm starting to sense that it's happening. So fingers crossed for better Max Christie. Fingers crossed for better Cardi G. And, um, yeah, that's where I'm at, man. More Christian, Christian Coloco as well. I do like what I see from him lob. In terms of lobs, he's an easy lob target. He's catching those. I want him to crash the glass better. I've yet to see him impress me rebounding the ball. That's been a bit of a frustration for me with Coloco's many minutes. He hasn't had many, but I mean M-I-N-I, small amount of minutes. Um, He hasn't rebounded the ball as well as I need to see him do so. But tonight he'll have opportunities against a guy like Yves Messi, a rookie, who uh, could potentially have a big game tonight um, if, if we allow him to. He's a sneaky, nice, athletic player, has some nice footwork, um, you know, definitely plays defense, can block some shots. And he's the only center on their roster, the only real center they actually have. So expect Yves Messi to be a very key component tonight for the Pelicans as well. Uh, and if he has a big game, which he's capable of doing, uh, he, can, he can really eat up glass. So we got to keep him off of that and um, run the floor with him. So, yeah, that's what it is, man. That's what it is. This is basically a three-man team. I do expect to see a lot of Jalen Noel off the bench. He is going to want to play well against us, I'm sure. So I would expect to hear his name called a lot. Robinson Earl, those guys, Jimison. Um, you know, they're, they're depleted. But they're, they're, they're trotting out there a valiant effort every night. And they finally got a victory last night. And I'm sure they want to keep that momentum going, play us hard. And they uh, are at home, so... You know, all these guys are pros. You don't get to the NBA by being bad. You know, you got to be some of the best in the world to get here. So when you give guys opportunities, you never know who's going to step up, break out, and show the world that they can really go. So let's not take these guys for granted just because they're depleted. The worst thing a team can do is come into a game like tonight and think they're going to be handed a win. It it is definitely a way to get beaten and embarrassed. Uh, So the Lakers just got to have the right mentality and... Like I said, we already made that mistake against Detroit. Let's not do it here against these highly, highly depleted Pelicans. 5 o'clock, BDL 44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.